if you're writing a Prism application, you're using MVVM or Model View View Model. Now, the biggest decision you have to make when using this pattern is how you're going to create an instance of your view model and set the data context of your view. Hi, I'm Brian Lagunas, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do just that using Prism's View Model Locator. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by Infragistix, fast and beautiful UI controls and time-saving tools for developers and UX pros. They really do provide the fastest path to amazing experiences. If you're looking for the fastest grids and charts on the market, or just looking for some new modern components to spruce up your application, look no further. Give Infragistix a try. Open up your favorite web browser, navigate to bit.ly slash prism infragistix, and tell them that Prism sent you. The more people that use this link, the more videos that I get to record. So let's give Infragistix a big thank you, visit their site, and check out their products. The application we're working with today is a simple WPF application. So if we take a quick look at the app.xaml.cs, we will see that the shell of this application is a main window, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at what our main window.xaml looks like. It is a window. It has a single text block, and we are binding to a title property, which we will expect to exist on our view model. So the next step is we need to create a view model, and then we want to set the data context of this view to an instance of that view model. And to do that, we're going to use the Prism View Model Locator. So obviously, the first step is we need to create a view model. So let's go ahead and do that. One thing to note is you'll see we have a views folder and a view models folder. The view model locator has a naming convention. Now this convention says that your views must be in a views namespace. So if we look at our main window view here, we'll see that the main window exists in a views namespace. So if your view is in a views namespace, we expect the view models to be in a view models namespace, hence a view models folder. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new class. And we have to name this something very specific as well, because we are using Prism and we are adhering to a view model locator naming convention. That convention says that the name of your view model must be view, the name of the view plus view model. So in this case, if we kind of just move this window out of the way, the name of the view is main window, okay? So that means our view model must be called main window view model. Name of the view plus view model equals the name of the view model. So we're gonna go ahead and add that class. Next, let's go ahead and derive from bindable base. And we need to add a property that we're going to be using for, for data binding. And we call it title here. So let's go ahead. And I'm using the Prism Temple Pack to stub this out. Uh, we'll call that title. Title. We'll add a simple CTOR here. And we set the title, I don't know. Uh, Hello, Prism World. Okay, so we have our view model. And I'm going to just get rid of that. It's following the name convention, main window view model, so it's named properly. And we're making sure that it's part of the view models namespace. So our view is in the views namespace, views.main window. Our view model is in the view models namespace, main window view model. The final step is to use the attach property to let this view know that, hey, you're gonna be using the view model locator to create your, your uh, data context to an instance of that main window view model. So the first step is to add a using statement. So we're gonna say XMLNS, we'll call it prism, and we'll say HTTP prismlibrary.com. Now that we have our namespace, we can now utilize prisms, view model locator, auto wire view model equals true. So by turning this on, we are now telling Prism, hey, whenever this view is created, we're going to go ahead, using the naming convention, we're going to find this view model. We're going to create an instance of that view model, and then we're going to set that instance of that view model to the data context of this view, 
and everything should just magically work. So let's go ahead and run the application and see what happens. All right, the application's running. And here we go. Hello, Prism World. So we have successfully used Prism's view model locator using the naming convention to find the view model, create an instance of it, and set the data context of the view automatically. So now I want to point out what happens if you don't follow the convention. So let's go ahead and close this and let's go into our main view, uh, main window view model. And let's say that we have a typo. We put uh, another L in the namespace here. What happens? So let's go ahead and, and run the application to find out. Well, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because we're not following the convention that the view model locator is expecting. So it's very important that you make sure that not only are your view and view model named properly, but they are also in the proper namespaces, a views namespace and a view models namespace. There is one caveat to this naming convention. Let's say we have a window and we call this main view. Okay, so we'll call this main view. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this out of here. And I'm gonna paste it right there. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm lazy, so I'll grab that as well. Now, let's say you have a main view. Your inclination is like, okay, I'm gonna create a new view model. I'm gonna follow the convention and I'm gonna say main view, view model. And that would be wrong. Do not do this. The one caveat with the naming convention is that if your view name ends in view, you do not have to put an extra view because let's be honest, this looks ridiculous. That is just ugly and you don't wanna see that. So in this case, it would just be main view model. So we'll go ahead and make that main view model uh, and I'm lazy. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste this information. And of course, update our constructor. And do some cleanup. And don't forget to update this to main view. All right, so now let's go ahead and run this application. And there we go. This is the main view using the main view model and it's working as expected. So remember, if your page name ends in view, you do not have to add another view in the name. Just keep it main view model, not main view view model, just main view model. And that's really the only caveat. Now I know what you're asking yourself. You're saying, hey, Brian, but what if I don't wanna follow this convention? What if I have a different convention? No problem. I'm gonna do another video that shows you how to change the convention for Prism's view model locator. Make sure you subscribe so you're notified when new videos like this are published. Thanks for watching.